the Velveteen Rabbit. There was once a Velveteen Rabbit, and in the beginning he was splendid. He was fat and bunchy, he had real thread whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink sateen. On Christmas morning, when he sat wedged in the top of the boy's stocking with a sprig of holly between his paws, the effect was charming. For a long time, he lived in the toy cupboard in the nursery. Being only made of velveteen, some of the expensive mechanical toys quite snubbed him and pretended they were real. What is real? asked the rabbit one day. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick-out handle? The only toy who was kind to the rabbit was the skin horse. The skin horse had lived in the nursery longer than any of the others, and he was very wise. Real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens when a child loves you. It takes a long time. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off. You get loose in the joints and very shabby. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse. But when you are real, you don't mind being hurt. The rabbit sighed. He longed to become real, and yet the idea of growing shabby was rather sad. He wished that he could become real without uncomfortable things happening to him. One evening, when the boy was going to bed, he couldn't find the china dog that always slept with him. Nana, who ruled the nursery, was in a hurry, and it was too much trouble to hunt for china dogs at bedtime. So she simply looked about her and made a swoop. Here, she said, take your old bunny. He'll do to sleep with you. That night, and for many nights after, the velveteen rabbit slept in the boy's bed. At first he found it rather uncomfortable, for the boy hugged him tight and rolled over on him and sometimes pushed him so far under the pillow that the rabbit could scarcely breathe. But very soon he grew to like it, for the boy used to talk to him and make nice burrows for him under the bedclothes that he said were like the burrows the real rabbits lived in. When the boy dropped off to sleep, the rabbit would snuggle down close under his little warm chin and dream with the boy's hands clasped close around him all night. And so time went on, and the little rabbit was very happy. So happy that he never noticed how his beautiful velveteen fur was getting shabbier and shabbier and his tail coming unsewn and all the pink rubbed off his nose where the boy had kissed him. Near the house where they lived there was a wood and in the warm summer evenings the boy liked to go there after tea to play. He took the velveteen rabbit with him and before he wandered off to pick flowers or play at pirates among the trees, he always made the rabbit a little nest where he could be quite cozy. One evening, while the rabbit was lying there alone, he saw two strange beings creep out of the tall bracken near him. They were rabbits like himself, but quite furry and brand new. They must have been very well made, for their seams didn't show at all. The rabbit stared hard to see which side the clockwork stuck out, for he knew that people who jump generally have something to wind them up, but he couldn't see it. Why don't you get up and play with us? one of them asked. I don't feel like it, said the rabbit, for he didn't want to explain that he had no clockwork. Ho, said the furry rabbit, I don't believe you can. I can, said the little rabbit, I don't want to. But wild rabbits have very sharp eyes. And this one stretched out his neck and looked. He hasn't got any hind legs. Fancy a rabbit without any hind legs. And he began to laugh. He doesn't smell right. He isn't a rabbit at all. He isn't real. The little rabbit nearly began to cry. Just then, the boy ran past them, and with a stamp of feet and a flash of white tails, the two strange rabbits disappeared. Come back and play with me, called the little rabbit. Oh, do come back. But there was no answer. The velveteen rabbit was all alone. For a long time he lay very still, hoping that they would come back, but they never returned, and presently the boy came and carried him home. Weeks passed and the little rabbit grew very old and shabby. 
He even began to lose his shape, and he scarcely looked like a rabbit anymore except to the boy. To him, he was always beautiful, and that was all that the little rabbit cared about. And then one day, the boy was ill. His face grew very flushed, and he talked in his sleep. And his little body was so hot that it burned the rabbit when he held him close. Strange people went in the nursery, and a light burned all night. The little velveteen rabbit lay there, hidden from sight under the bedclothes, afraid that someone might take him away, for he knew that the boy needed him. He was, it was a very long, weary time. Presently, the fever turned, and the boy got better. He was able to sit up in bed and look at picture books, while the little rabbit cuddled close at his side. And one day, they let him get up and dress. It was a bright sunny morning, and they had carried the boy out onto the balcony. The boy was going to the seaside tomorrow. Nana and the doctor had talked about it all while the little rabbit lay under the bedclothes and listened. The room was to be disinfected, and all the books and toys that the boy had played with in bed would be burnt. Just then, Nana caught sight of the rabbit. How about his old bunny, she asked. That, said the doctor. Why, it's a mass of scarlet fever germs. Burn it at once. So the little rabbit was put into a sack with the old picture books and a lot of rubbish and carried out to the end of the garden. The gardener promised to come early the next morning and burn the whole lot. That night, the boy slept in a different bedroom with a splendid new bunny, all white, plush, with real glass eyes. And while the boy dreamt of the seaside, the little, the little rabbit lay among the old books and very lonely. By wriggling a bit, he was able to get his head through the opening of the sack and look out. He was shivering, for by this time his coat had worn so thin from hugging that it was no longer any protection to him. Nearby, he could see the thicket of raspberry canes, in whose shadow he had played with the boy on bygone mornings, and a great sadness came over him. A tear, a real tear, trickled down his little shabby velvet nose and fell to the ground, and then, where the tear had fallen, a flower grew, with slender green leaves and a blossom like a golden cup, and presently... The blossom opened and out stepped a fairy in a dress of pearl and dewdrops. She gathered the little rabbit up in her arms and kissed him on his velvety nose that was all damp from crying. Little rabbit, I am the nursery magic fairy, she said. I take care of all the playthings that the children have loved. When they are worn out and the children don't need them anymore, then I come and take them away with me and turn them into real. And she held the little rabbit close in her arms flew with him into the wood to the open glade between the tree trunks where the wild rabbits danced. And when they saw the fairy, they all stopped and stood round a ring to stare at her. I've brought you a new playfellow, the fairy said. You must be very kind to him and teach him all he needs to know, for he is going to live with you forever and ever. She kissed the little rabbit again and put him down on the grass. Run and play, little rabbit, she said. But the little rabbit sat, sat quite still. He remembered about his hind legs, and he didn't want the other rabbits to see that he didn't have any. He did not know that the fairy had changed him altogether. But just then something tickled his nose, and before he thought what he was doing, he lifted his hind toe to scratch it. And he found that he actually had hind legs. He gave one leap, and he grew so excited that when at last he did stop to look for the fairy, she had gone. He was a real rabbit at last. Autumn passed and winter, and in the spring, when the days grew warm and sunny, the boy went out to play in the wood behind the house, and while he was playing, a rabbit crept out from the bracken and peeped at him, and about his little soft nose and his round black eyes there was something familiar, so that the boy thought to himself, why, he looks just like my old bunny that was lost when I had scarlet fever. But he never knew that it was really his own bunny. Come back to look at the child who had helped him to be real. <laughs>